In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the glob module, and that's quite a mouthful. Glob is just such a weird word. No matter how many times you say it, it doesn't get any better. Glob, glob, glob. As you can hear, it's not getting any better. But let's discuss it because it's a very powerful module in Python. And the glob module finds all the path names matching a specified pattern according to the rules used by the Unix shell. And the results are going to be returned in an arbitrary order. So we kind of have this file finding feature. And I'm going to be showing you how it works, of course, rather than just reading the documentation. But it's important to note that the pattern rules for globs are not regular expressions. Instead, they follow standard Unix path expansion rules. And you'll know what this means as soon as we start writing these regex-like expressions. And finally, for the more advanced programmers, the shell variable names and tilde are not expanded when you are working with glob. So that was just a bit of dry text to really kick off this tutorial. I know how much you guys love dry text, so I thought that would be a great start, but let's jump into actually using the glob module. So to get globs to actually work, you need to have some files somewhere on your computer that you want to target. So in this example, I created three JavaScript files. One is ananas.js, apple.js, and banana.js. But I have a lot of JavaScript files inside this project, so we will be finding those as well using the glob module. Now, the first thing we're going to do is try using glob so you can get a general understanding on how it works. So here we have glob.glob, .glob, and with this function, we can specify some sort of pattern for the file that we're trying to find. So here we're going to type in, for example, apple.js, and I mean, if we print this now, this won't be the most useful function in the world because we literally typed in apple.js and it's going to look for a file in our current folder that matches apple.js and return it inside an array. If there's no file that matches this pattern, it's not going to return anything to us. Where this becomes powerful is when we start using these Unix path expansion rules. So for example, instead of typing apple, we can pretend we don't know what the first two letters are, and we can use the question mark kind of like a wild card for a character. So if we run that, we'll get apple.js. Now we can both agree that banana and ananas have the exact same amount of letters. So one cool thing you can do, of course, is type in, let's say, six question marks. And with this, we will find all files that start with six random characters and end with JavaScript. So if we run that, we'll get ananas and JavaScript back. So the question mark just matches any single character. And I'm going to be pasting in these comments so you can remember these as we move on with this program. But to keep it simple, I'll just type in question mark, pull, pull, pull. And if we run that, of course, we get apple.js back in the array. Now, something that you might find even more useful is the absolute wildcard. So we can just copy and paste that. And instead of typing in apple.js, we can type in asterisk.js, and this will absorb all of the content before .js. So it will match that. And then if it ends with .js, it's going to put it inside our array. So if we run this, we will get apple JavaScript, ananas JavaScript, and banana.javascript all back inside this glob because it matched everything before the .js. And you can also do it with .py and other extensions. Whatever you want to match, you can use it inside here. And if we run that, we will get main.py back because this matched all the characters before .py. And you can even be crazy and do asterisk dot asterisk. So it will match everything in front of the dot and then the file must contain a dot and it will match everything after the dot. So if we run that, we will get all of the files back. But really, we just want to get all of the JavaScript files in this folder. So we will type in asterisk.javascript. Now I will put this down so we have some more space. Now let's copy and paste this down here because we have something else to cover. And that is the square brackets. The square brackets allow us to insert some characters that we want to use to match a certain character from a file. So instead of choosing to match any character, we can use these square brackets to match only specified characters. So if we put A and V and D, it will only match these characters for the first character that we're searching for. So if we put A, V, D, the only thing we're going to get back for the first character is ananas and apple. And we still need to define what the rest of it is going to look like. So we can put an asterisk there. So the first character must be one of these. 
and then the rest can be whatever it wants, followed by .js. So if we run that, we'll get apple and ananas back because A was inside the selection, but V and D was not. But if we put something such as B and A, it's going to allow both B and A to be matched. So if we run that, we will get everything back because the first character in banana is AB, which is inside this square bracket. And the first character of apple is also inside the square bracket. So those are the first characters that must match. If we put something such as Z and let's say F, it's not going to match anything because none of these have Z or F for the first character. So simply put, this matches any character in the sequence. Now there's also the exact opposite. So let's just take this, paste it under and add the negation symbol here. So now this checks that these are not in the sequence before matching the file. So if Z and F are not located at the first character, it's going to match it. And we can just add that comment as well. So we can add matches any character not in the sequence. And to demonstrate this, we will add another file called zebra.javascript. And we'll go back to main. And now if we run it, you'll see that zebra is not going to be inside this glob array. We will only have apple, ananas, and banana. But in the one where we did do the matching, we will only get zebra back because Z is inside this sequence while the other characters are not. So that was just the basic introduction to how we can use glob with its syntax. But now let's actually use it in some context that makes more sense, such as searching folders and inside folders. Because if we're only searching in our current folder, it maybe doesn't make too much sense if it's this small because we can literally see all the files here. But maybe we want to look inside all of these folders to find out which ones are JavaScript files and which ones are Python files. So we're going to just remove all of this now that we understand the syntax. And we're going to type in print glob dot glob. And we're going to use something a bit more special, which is the double asterisk and then backslash dot JavaScript. And actually we need to add an asterisk here. So what this is saying is that we want to search all of the folders recursively. So we're going to check in, let's say scheduled, for example, open it up, check in shorts, for example, open it up. And if there's a JavaScript file inside here, it's going to match it here. So this will just open up the folders indefinitely. Now we also need to specify a root directory. So here we can type in root directory and inside the root directory, I'm just going to copy the path and reference, the absolute path and reference to my root directory for this folder, but it can be any root directory from your computer. So we will just use this one here. Then we'll use a comma once again, and we need to set recursive to true. So it continuously looks inside the folders. And in Python 3.11, they introduced the include hidden parameter, which allows us to check for hidden files, which I'm just going to set to true. Now, if we run this program, we're going to get all the JavaScript files back from my Python folder. So here, as you can see, it actually recursively checked inside schedule. So it opened up scheduled, it looked inside all the shorts, there was nothing there. Then it opened up videos, it realized that there was another section called globs, and I had some JavaScript files in there, so it was able to find them. So here we have, of course, test.javascript, hello.javascript, and index.javascript. And you can still use the rules here. So you can also say something such as, we only want files that begin with H or with I, and if we run that, we're going to get less files back, such as hello.javascript and index.javascript, because those were the rules that we defined. But I like it better with that asterisk. So I will leave it there. But one thing to mention about using glob.glob .glob is that this can become really slow, especially if you have lots of files, because it's going to load them all at once or put them all into an array all at once. So you're going to have a lot of data on your hands if you just run this directly and store it directly. So a way to avoid loading all of these files into memory immediately is by creating a generator from this. And to do that, we're going to remove the print statement. And here we'll type in globs equal. And at the moment, it's not doing anything, of course. So what we have to do here is say glob.iglob for iterator glob and that will turn it into a generator. So we can access that data in a more memory efficient way. But everything else is exactly the same. Now we can actually access it in a more memory efficient way. So we can access this one element at a time. For example, we can type in print globs 
dot next. And if we run that, we will get the first element back. We can say next, next two more times, and we'll get each one on demand. Now, if you want to ignore that and print all of them anyway, you can type in for i file in enumerate. And here I will type in globs starting at one and we'll print i followed by the file with a separator of a colon and a space. So if we run that, we can see how many files we have that are JavaScript files in our main folder, which is my pi December folder. Now again, this works for other files as well. So you can define whatever rules you want. And if you change this to dot pi, it's going to be much bigger. As you can see right here, we have a lot of pi files inside our program. And this can easily go up into the tens of thousands, depending on what files you're looking for in your computer. So it might be smarter to create a generator instead of just loading all of those into memory immediately. Anyway, do let me know what you think about Glob or whether you use this in your code or not already. But with that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.